well before Christopher Columbus ever thought of crossing the Atlantic. Two distinct different cultures lived here on the island of St. Lucia. Today, I want to learn more about the native inhabitants of this island and how the culture has evolved over the years. I'll be joining Chef Rabi to see some very historic, unique St. Lucian dishes and maybe learn some of the unique Creole language still spoken today on the island. St. Lucia, thanks for having me back for another exciting taste of history. Wow, spectacular. The saltfish is our local Creole dish. Everywhere in the island, you find people are accustomed of having this type of dishes in the country. What we stick to is natural. And it seems to be like a lot of love. You didn't cook for retail, you cooked for yourself. Yes. And in St. Lucia, everybody has a large family because you cook and you're always expecting people coming in. It's me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. 9 so o'clock. <laughs> oh, lovely. Bobby. So good to meet you. Yeah, you too, Chef Walter. And I think you bring me a little liquid sunshine here. Yes, the liquid sunshine, you know, that's natural. We're in the rainforest. It's so nice to work with you up here in the mountains of St. Lucia. So what are we going to do? We're going to dabble in a whole bunch of different things. We have to represent St. Lucia. This is our real national dish. We do a, we do a salt fish and green figs. And people, a lot of people prefer it with breadfruit. So we do salt fish and breadfruit or salt fish and green fig. Or everybody has their particular taste. And okay? you throw a few sardines with it. And we, so we're going to do sardines with it also because sardines are also salted and roasted. Scrape the scales off of it, obviously. You get down to the meat and I just squeeze it like a peanut. I get mm -hmm. the center bone out and we saute these with onions and peppers and whatnot and some lime juice and gotcha. it's a big breakfast thing down here. We have a piece of saltfish here or bacalao. Now we just shred the saltfish. I just cut it up. We do it with all the salt in it. Okay, so here we go. Onion. Onions, a little shad of any, a little celery, seasoning peppers, some bell peppers, a little tomato. And since they're so salty, the more onions and stuff you put to, you you to, know, to, 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 to balance off the salt. Off. So here we go, we have the breadfruit that's been mm -hmm. Scraped out on the, on, the, on the outside like this one. Nice hot breadfruit and we just get the meat out of it and we're going to leave it in there still until we're ready to eat it for our stew. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to prepare our national dish. So we get our breadfruit and do two servings. How is that? So you could have one, yep, yep. I could have one. So some avocado with that. You call them avocado or pears? We call them, well, avocados and pears, but we use both names. Yeah. Additionally, a cucumber salad goes with that. So a little salt in there, a little garlic, some peppers for color, some scallions, a tomato, enhance the color. And that goes next to your avocado right there. And some nice saltfish over the breadfruit. God, nice flavor, huh? So that's it. Roasted breadfruit, saltfish, and some avocado. Try some of that. A little bit of everything. Wow. The flavor. And I love the idea of the salt in the car. Keep, keep in the, road, the, yeah. the natural raw salt into it. And obviously, the breadfruit just adds a lot of texture mm -hmm. to it. Mmm. -hmm. I could eat, all, eat this all day. Go by the beachside, relax. This food can bear the name. A taste of history yeah. because it is really it is history. your history. That's part of our culture. That's our history right there.
So next, Ravi? Well, next we're going to do um, something very similar to conch that we call buigo in Patwa, the English name we refer to them as wilks. And I guess in the wider world they call them sea snails. So they, you get them in all variations of sizes. So as anything else, these have to be boiled or as they don't come out of the shell. So approximate time to get them loose? The different sizes take different times to do. For example, if you're boiling this and this together, this little one will obviously get more tender before, you know, before, before, the, big before the big ones. Nothing in the water? No salt? Nothing? Salt. Salt. And that's how most people like them. They just want a bowl of buigo, they just grab them, pull them out of their shell. Some people eat the whole thing, or we could just dip them into a nice vinaigrette. Wow. This is the traditional way to eat it, just boiled, plucked out and eaten. Nice and tender, it's a wonderful, wonderful protein to have. So Robbie, what are those little fish you got over there? Okay, well, we call these tui tui, or tiny tart fish. We catch them in the mouth of the river when they're going down into the ocean. The way we clean them, we just pinch the head and pull the guts off. So you get rid of that fishy taste. So now we're going to make a nice little acra, uh, fritters or bernays as they call in different yeah. parts of the world. So we're going to season them up. So we're going to put loads of onions and loads of scallions go in there. Scallions really bring out the flavor in acras. Mm -hmm. And as anything else, our shadow bernay. Celery. Celery is playing an integral part, obviously. Yeah. And a little black pepper for a little heat. We put in some hot sauce in there. Also, a little curry, all-purpose flour. Mix up, then. So we mix it up nicely. We got to put a little salt in there for flavor. Salt brings out flavor. And I think we got the right consistency right about here. After we get that mixed in. There we go, perfect viscosity. Spoon them in. To the oil. Yeah. Let it brown on both sides and done. No baking powder? No, no absolutely none. none. You just want them golden brown pretty much. And don't put them too thick so that the batter is not cooked inside. Now we're gonna make a nice little dressing for that. A little mayo, a little garlic. And we're gonna put in a little spicy guava jelly. It's awesome on anything. A little ginger in there. Mm -hmm. Chef, dig in, try one. All right, ready? Chef. To die for, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a great dish. So simple, so easy, yet so delicious. And so Saint Lucia, by the way. Very Saint Lucian. To explore more Saint Lucian favorites, I visited my friend at Fond La Vissap to see how they make their cassava bread. Cassava is a bitter root vegetable that is actually poisonous when eaten raw. Only after cooking can it be eaten. Kanish, you started without me. Welcome to Fon Latisab. Yeah. I'm showing you how we process cassava to make cassava bread. This here is a cassava root. First, you need to peel the skin of the cassava. Wash it first. Okay. Gritting the cassava. This here is a copper gritter. Man, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you do the rest. After we grit the cassava, add some water to the pulp and squeeze the juice into a container. Mm -hmm. It's then put on in the press to squeeze out the juice from it. Gotcha. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the cassava pulp to put it in the, in the bag to, to put underneath the press. This is a press, can you? Looks yeah. to me like a bunch of sticks of wood. I'll put this here. Yeah. I'll put this over. Yeah. This, this over. Okay, and then I'll put these big rocks on there. Make sure it's stable. Amazing. Um, right now it have about 50 pounds on it. How long you let it sit there? For about half an hour. That's it? Yeah. We have been trying to preserve our queer language all the various forms of our culture on dance, the Creole language, Creole cooking, medicines, storytelling, and so on. We provide them for a range of areas that they can learn about St. Lucia's culture. Almost 80% of the Creole language came from the French. The Creole began during slavery, where slaves who came from West Africa had difficulty understanding the French language, the French slave masters, and so we formed the Creole. Mm, 
In the very early days under the colonial system, our colonial masters thought that whenever persons talk Creole, it was an, a way to plan a mutiny. So persons who basically spoke the language of those who were in the rural community, those who were basically illiterate, never went to school. But the Creole is the second most spoken language in the Caribbean. And there are lots of Creoles that have been in extinction and we're trying our best to ensure that we keep that language and continue to promote it and keep on improving it all the time. Dave, your name is here for Plus Research Folklore. It sounds like French to me. I saw that uh, was in, in St. Lucia. Creole has about 80% French. <laughs> That's the reason why some of the words and phrases... I've been coming to St. Lucia for many, many years and I've always loved to come here because oh, yeah. I can pick up a lot of the Creole. Not all of it, not, all of not, it. not when they talk fluently and yeah. fast, but there's so much similarities between You're the languages. You're quite right, and it's a very lovely language. It's a very dramatic language. So let me help you to spread the word of uh, Creole. Eben zaboka lakai. Zaboka. Zaboka? Yeah. That is a strange one to me. What does that mean? Avocado. <laughs> avocado. <laughs> avocado, because zabuka. I like I, like I zabuka. I like zabuka. <laughs> I like big time. Ou aime zabuka. Aime, oh, aime. Aime, aime zabuka. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I got it. Aime, 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 aime zabuka. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, the name of the show in Creole, which is called The Taste of History in English. Okay, ça c'est un goût l'histoire. <laughs> ça c'est Creole la poli. Et puis, ça c'est un beau bagaille. Parce que l'histoire, c'est ça, nous. Et bien, tout le monde qui a continué à garder Spectacular. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Spectacular. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> While well, the cassava is getting ready, I'm going to show you how we cut logs, make boards, pulls, or planks. This saw is called the pit saw. Uh -huh. Okay? So now I'll be showing you how we do the log sawing by first. One guy on top, one guy on the bottom. Let me do it. You can do it very easy. Uh, just keep your hand light. Yeah, light. Yeah. Put now come forward a little. Come yeah. forward a little. So keep your hand light. So then you can lift it. So cool, man. Unbelievable. They take it off from the press right now. She's going to sieve the cassava pulp. A lot of work for a piece of bread, I'll tell you that. Look how dry it is, though. Unbelievable. I love to use all the old utensils from way back when. It's so remarkable. Now that we sieve the cassava pulp, we'll add the other ingredients like coconut in there. Great. Brown sugar. Nutmeg. A little pinch of salt. Oh. Okay. We'll be adding the starch into the cassava. So then sit up, then you put it in there, and then you're squeezing it in, right? Yeah, we're squeezing the juice from the starch. You need a hand? Yeah. Yeah. Oh! Man! <laughs> so this goes in. Okay. Now she's going to sift it into the cassava pulp. Now she's going to knit it together. Then I'll be taking a leaf to bake it on. We put it on the plantain leaf to avoid it from sticking at the bottom of the pot. She's smoothing it out very nice, yeah, I can yeah. see it. She's an expert. And then it goes? On the fire. On the fire. Let me say, I had cassava bread in the past, so I never knew how much work was in there. Yeah, a lot of work in there. Around October, November, December month, we shall do our folk dance. The members of the committee would come and spend the evening dancing, socialize. I think it's ready. What do you think? Oh, okay. Not bad for a German chef in the woods of St. Lucia. What do you think? Bon chef. Ah, the bon chef. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> About 30 minutes has been cooking. 
give you a little banana ketchup. Yeah, there you go. Let me dig it in there. The cassava man. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Oh, I tell you what. Eye opening for me. And my dancing partner over there. Yeah. Come over here. Yeah. My dancing partner. I want to thank you for showing me the moves. Yeah. <laughs> so much flavor. Very nice. Fish roe is a big deal down here in our seafood festivals. These things are things of the past that people cherish before and they don't get much now. The fishermen, some of them do it roasted by the beach and this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna take this bad boy and we're just gonna season them up lightly. A little salt and spices, whatever spices of your choice, you know, as anything else, you know, whatever spices indigenous of your culture, you use whatever flavors you like, all right? And I dip it in a nice little garlicky vinaigrette like. Okay, and then we throw these on the grill. It's a quick process too, it doesn't take much. Very, it doesn't take much. It's my first time I see fish roe on the grill. Normally, we just put it in a saute pan, maybe some capers and some lemon juice in there. So then we take our next fish roe and we're gonna cut it up in little rosettes. We get that into a bowl. Season that up nicely. A little salt, a little garlic, shallow benny. Okay, into the oil. Okay, so we're gonna fry a couple of these. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna stew Just marinate a little bit, all purpose flour, and yeah. off it goes. Nothing else. Nothing else. Okay, these should take a couple more minutes. You see, it's just got a little hole, it's mm -hmm. just oozing a little juice. Some people like it dry, some people like it juicy. What, what are you looking for? I think for? it's just a little firmness. That's done right there. Just let it just get a little more char grilled on the outside and we're good to go. Fried one is just about ready. We're about ready to take these out. We're gonna chop these up. Looks like a sausage. Natural sausage. Yeah, fish sausage. I'm throwing some nice salsa over them. There you go, chef. Give it a go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful, it's really nice. It's an ugly looking fish, Robbie. Yep, we call it box fish. But it's tasty, right? Very tasty. <laughs> Just like turkey, actually. It's not very fishy. It has the meat on the four corners in here and on the top back area. And we create a nice stuffing of anything of your choice. So we, we cut it open. So what we do, we take a knife and we go down right in here. Pretty bony, huh? It's not bony, it's just an outside skeleton, so you just have you get a crunch. So you have the inside, this mm -hmm. in the head. You get you, you cut this out, and then you can see it's just the meat on the four corners. Then we're gonna create a little stuffing of some some fish. And here we got some mai mai fillets that have been marinated already, and some sort of starch. Some people use farine, some people use potatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use some dashin. Just mix it up. Yeah. The dashin is a tube, or it's actually a root vegetable. Root vegetable, actually called malanga in some languages, or taro. I'm gonna use a little bit of green figs, green bananas. Yes. So I'm gonna put a little ginger in there, a little garlic, some fresh peppers. And if I would buy it in a food stall, how many would I buy? One or two of those guys? But for starters, this is a very tiny one. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah. They, they wouldn't even sell sell a small one either. You know, all different sizes, and then I cut them up and stuff up a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. and roast them and people rush them. Fish eggs, sea eggs, stuffed calf, all these things. They go first before any fish or chicken or any kind of meat or whatever. There we go, so we get the stuffing in here. No rub it in nothing, just like that, the stuffing stays in. Yep, I'm a pro at this. I got it, as we say in Patois, giscott. Just the right yeah, amount. Just the right amount, yeah. yeah. And then we throw that on the grill yep. and we're good to go. And we let that roast. Now, I'm gonna get a little creative here, create a little Dutch oven here for it, so cooks it up a little quicker, turn it over and get it nicely roasted and ready to eat. All right, chef, well, we are now uh, one more exotic food that we find in St. Lucia. We have a sea urchin here, and that's a complete cooked one done the yeah. traditional way. So it takes like about 100 or more sea urchins to give you this full stuffed one here with a little peak. There's no seasoning in there, no onions, no garlic, no nothing, just natural sea egg and sea water. Walt, I'm gonna let you taste this in its natural state, and then I'm gonna let you taste it cooked up with some herbs and spices and stuff, okay? So the traditional way we eat it, you just break the head off, 
You just make sure you get all the little spines off, obviously. You just taste a piece of this. Interesting. And it's mild, it's not too much flavor, but it's uh, unique. So now we take a little bit of this, slice it up. Let's just get a few onions and stuff in there. So it's just sauteed it a little bit? And just sauteed it a little bit with some of these fresh herbs. I got a pan ready for you, and then we gone. That's how I prefer it. Look at him. He's steaming by all ends. Okay, he's ready. He doesn't look mean anymore now. Not at all. <laughs> he's been tamed. Oh. Oh man, beautiful. Then we're gonna go to the cough and the way you eat it. So we just take out the outside skeleton. Wow. See, tastes like, oh. turkey, tastes like turkey, right? The meat of it by itself is just... Turkey pasta. I would have never believed you that you said it didn't taste like fish. I would have never believed that. Yeah, it tastes like, all, all my life never. I told people that. you feel like you're eating turkey or chicken. That's amazing. Robbie, that's a beautiful snapper, but I guess too big for what we're doing today, right? Yeah, you're perfectly right. So that's why we got two miniature ones. Because you make them for one versus they would be feeding 40 That'll people. Be feeding, uh, feeding a generation. Yeah. So we got two lovely snappers there. We call them Vivano. The big eye black one, we call it um, Gauzier, the black the black one, which is the meat is even... You lovely. actually call them Vivano, like in France? Yeah. Interesting. There you go, <laughs> see? Some things don't change. Yeah. And here we got some mai mai fillets that have been marinated already, just like our fish. They've been seasoned nicely. We're going to do a typical St. Lucian fish broth. So, in the pan, on the fire, we got some onions and garlic and fresh herbs already boiling. All we do is just lay our fish in there and let it simmer. And just let it steam away. And we're going to throw in some green bananas around it that's been cooked already. Nice refreshing it with some fresh tomatoes and some seasoning peppers. I think I did myself on this one. All it needs is a little lime juice and we're good to go. There we go. You know about the flavors? Come on, this pot is amazing, huh? Okay, here we go. Nice traditional fish broth, chef. And I'm gonna go put the snapper on. So we have a nice snapper that's being steamed in our fish broth. I'm just gonna just roast one for you when this is done. Won't take much time either. Won't take much time either. Beautiful. So we're gonna scoop in some fish stock here. Yeah? Get a piece of cassava in there. Sure. Piece of green banana in there. And now we're gonna put in a little bit of mai mai. And then part of our red fish. Break the tail end off for you, chef. Perfect. Mm. Yeah. The snapper just melts in your mouth. I think you have the entire island of St. Lucia in the calabash. That's right. This right here is our culture. So, our last little fishy dishy. We got some nice roast snapper. I'm gonna taste some really nice fish. This is it right there. Garlic sauce on there. Wow. It's so beautiful. And only one word. Fifth wonder. No, spectacular. And the fifth wonder. <laughs> the fifth wonder here and spectacular. That's really. This is what I, I live for, this. Robbie, no wonder they call you the fifth wonder of St. Lucia. Yeah. You deserve it. Thank you. Let me tell you, I've been coming to St. Lucia for a long time, but I've never seen this much culinary heritage into the past of St. Lucia. That's what I'm here for. And I really want to tell you, it was fantastic meeting you, working with you, and understanding. So many things for the first time I've ever met, including marinating a chef. So let's toast it. That's, that's very important. Cheers to good health, world peace, and a little prosperity, and to culinary gurus. All for a taste of history. There you go. <laughs>